unworthy Israelite becomes credible messenger of Yahshua. An unworthy Israelite becomes a credible messenger of Yahshua. Our, our keynote scriptures are found in Acts chapter 9, verse 10 through 16. For those of you who want to turn to your scriptures, and uh, our dear uh, sister Vida Asia is putting it up in the chat so you can read along as she places it up there as well. Picking up in Acts chapter 9, verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Kaniah. And to him said Master Yahweh in a vision, <coughs> Kaniah. And he said, Behold, I am here, Master Yahweh. And Master Yahweh said unto him, Kum walek, arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Yahuda, for one called Shaol of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and have seen in a vision a man named Kaniah coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Kaniah answered, Master Yahweh, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy Kodashim saints at Yerushalayim. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But Master Yahweh said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. May Yah had a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Hallelujah. Uh, praise Yah. We will attempt tonight to review and explain why an unworthy Israel, so unworthy that he would later say of himself, he is the chief of all sinners, Shaol of Tarsus, was nonetheless chosen by Yah to be his messenger. And he was chosen primarily to be Yah's messenger to non-Israelite Gentiles. And how important it is to Yahweh that non-Israelite Gentile people receive the good news of Yahshua from Israelite messengers. This is very important to Yahweh. As Yahweh stated in verse 9, uh, chapter Acts 9, verse 15, but Master Yahweh said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, after Shaul's encounter with uh, Yahshua, on the Damascus road, Yeshua said to him, as recorded in Acts chapter six, or in Acts uh, chapter nine, verse six, Yeshua said to him, arise and go into the city, and it must be told thee what thou must do. Now, I I'm gonna testify tonight, um, having been a chaplain for a number of years, working with youth that have been in trouble or men and women uh, locked up, ministering with them behind closed doors. And then when I retired, my, my thoughts were, well, what do I do to continue to serve Yah by serving his people? And pretty much Yah has shown me go into the city. That's where our people are. And as dangerous as it may seem, that's where a lot of answers will come to. 
And that's what Yah showed to Shaol. Go into the city, and it shall be told to you what thou must do. Now, Yeshua's special mission to non-Israelite Gentiles is so important to him that he gave a special appearance of himself to Shaol, who was an Israelite enemy of the good news of Yeshua. Mm. In order that such an extreme conversion by a man as Shaol, who was adamantly opposed to the good news, would be a miraculous sign to others. And that this would make Shaol what we call in uh, urban ministries and inner city ministries, this would make Shaol a credible messenger mm. to others regarding the good news of Yeshua when they would see such a dramatic change in the life of Shaol from being an enemy of the good news of Yahshua to becoming a credible messenger of the good news of Yahshua. Now, as we assess the value of Shaol's conversion to Yahshua's mission to the non-Israelite Gentiles, we must take into account the prophet Isaiah's prophecy regarding Israelites' mission outreach, even to non-Israelite Gentiles, as stated in Isaiah chapter 49, uh, verses 1 through 7. Uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. It says, Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken you people from afar. Yah hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahuwah and my work with my Elohim. And now thus saith Yah that formed me from the womb to be his servant to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yah, and my Elohim shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel, the tribes of Yaakov and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith Yah, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhorred, a servant of rulers, Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because Yah that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel and he shall choose you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it, 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 it's amazing. This is uh, the Israelite mission to non-Israelite people described in Isaiah 49 that Shaul was called. It states in Acts chapter 9, verse 8 through 9, that when Shaol received this calling on the Damascus road, that he immediately became blind, as stated in verse 8 and 9 of Acts chapter 9. And Shaol rose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three 
days without sight, neither did eat nor drink. Uh, Isaiah the prophet speaks of Israelites as being Yah's blind messenger. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 18 through 20, where Yah says to Israel, Hear you deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as Yah's servant, seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. So tonight, it's interesting in light of this prophecy in Isaiah 42, that when Yeshua called Shaol in Acts 9, that Shaol was in a state of blindness. And he is told in verse 6, and he trembling and astonished said, Master, what wilt thou have me to do? And the master said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, Acts chapter 9, verse 6, in conjunction with Isaiah 42, verse 19, illustrates that when Israelites do not understand or either reject Yah's mission to non-Israelite Gentiles, that they then are in darkness and blindness spiritually of Yah's mission purpose for them to do. As said of Shaol in chapter 9, verse 6, and trembling and astonished, said, Master, what wilt thou have me to do? And the master said to him, Arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Uh, for Israelites to be Yah's credible messengers, we, we really must understand what he wants to do. It's not about what we want to do or what we think should be done. It's really about what he wants us to do. If not, scriptures tell us we are in spiritual blindness. So Shaul asks Yah the question, in verse 6 of Acts 9, Master, what wilt thou have me to do? And Yah responded in verse 6, quote, It shall be told thee what thou must do. Yah tells Israelites in Isaiah 42, verse 6 and 7, that our mission as his credible messengers is twofold, as stated in Isaiah 42, verse 6 and 7. Quote, I, Yah, have called you in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sat in darkness out of the prison house. Isn't it interesting because we are, as a people hidden in prison houses, that blindness in prison is due, as the scriptures say, because we've ignored or either decided otherwise to obey what Yah commissions us to do. In uh, chapter uh, 42, verse 6, Yah says, we are to be a light to non-Israelite Gentiles. But then in verse 7, he says, we are to open the blind eyes of our own people, the Israelites, as well. So this is the twofold ministry mission that Yah is calling us to do. So likewise, Yah called Shaol to be a credible messenger and revealed to Shaol another credible messenger in Damascus named Kaniah, who was sent to explain to Shaul the mission he was to do both to Israelites and non-Israelite Gentiles. As stated in chapter uh, 9 of Acts and, and verse 10 through 15, it says, 
And there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Hananiah. And to him said the master in a vision, Hananiah. And he said, behold, I am here, master. And Yah said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Yehuda for one called Shaol of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. And he had seen in a vision a man called Kaniah coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Kaniah answered, Master, I've heard many, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy, thy Kodeshim, the saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all they call on thy name. And the master said unto him, go thy way. And he is a chosen vessel unto me hmm. to hear my, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So we see in verse 15, Saul's mission would be both to Israelites and non-Israelite Gentiles. And when Saul received this calling and mission, Immediately, he regained his sight, as stated in verse 17 and 20. And Kaniah went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Ak Shao, the master, even Yahshua, that appeared unto you in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was immersed. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Shaol certain days with the Talmudim, the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Messiah in the synagogues that he is the son of Elohim. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Uh, praise you. You know, one of the reasons uh, many people look at us Israelites today as being not credible. A lot of times it's not so much just the information we know, but it may be how obnoxious we can be to other people, not only to other people outside our race, but even with each other. And we, we have a tenacity to be nasty. And one of the reasons many people look at Israelites now is is, and we're not looked upon as credible messengers of the kingdom of Yah, is because some camps are teaching against Yah's mission of salvation to non-Israelite people. Uh, in addition, as well as we should be doing to our Israelites, there's one group, I'm going to call them out, IUIC, because there was a young lady was divorced. She had been married to a Gentile. After she was divorced, she married. Uh, after she had married a Gentile, she had had a child by that that man. And after they were divorced, she actually was. She came into the truth. So she went to a UIC, a IUIC congregation. Uh, with that mixed race son of who had a father who's a Gentile. And they turned her away at the door. They said, this young man looks mixed. What is he mixed with? They actually asked her at the door. And she told them, well, his father's a white year old Gentile man. They said, well, he can't come in here. We only minister to those of our own people. Now, this is a little eight, nine-year-old boy 
a lovely, wonderful, innocent young man who loves Yah, and they said he can't come in. I I'm sorry. I'm not a troublemaker, but I gotta we gotta call this out. That's stupid. Just stupid. That's this is outside the will of Yah. This is blindness. And I know we want to get along, be along in Israelite culture and all, and somebody like me getting up saying this, I'm being divisive over doctrine. But it's not just doctrine, this is practice. This doesn't line up with the mission and purpose that Yah has called us to do. Nor to get up every Gentile I see. I'm going to say, one day you're going to be my slave and you're going to polish my shoes. And we don't know what that Gentile is, has been about, or what they've done in their lives. It's not for us to judge anybody. Only I know. But this is the way we walk in darkness these days. And some of us think it's, it's cool to be that way. We've had to separate from some people who have carried that teaching. And we cannot uh, submit to that. And will not submit to that. And so Yahshua says regarding any false doctrine like this, he's, he says this in, in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, Yahshua says, and he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Mm. So Yeshua is saying here to leave the false teachers in Israel alone who are not planted in Yah's purpose and mission. But to those of you who are credible messengers and witnesses of Yah's truth, this is what Yah says to you in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Arise shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yah is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yah shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Hallelujah. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Finally, Shaul was chosen by Yah to be not only a credible messenger to the Gentiles, but he was also to be a chosen vessel to the children of Israel. Again, as stated in Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and 16, but Master Yahweh said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Notice in verse 15 the phrase, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name unto the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Uh, Shaul's ministry to the Gentiles and to their kings and rulers was not only to bring them into the light of salvation in the good news of Yahshua, but also to bring them into the blessings of Yah by causing them to help the physical needs of the children of Israel through our struggles and troubles for having been disobedient to Yah's laws and commandments that has resulted in the curses of the law of Moses being poured out on us. As Shaul stated to nine Hebrew Gentile believers in Rome, in Romans chapter 15, verse 25 through 27, he says, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them, the Hebrews, in physical things. So Israelites today, we have to be credible messengers 
-hmm. to the Gentile rulers and nations of this world in order to raise support and help for the physical needs of our Israelite people, just as Sha'al was chosen of Yah to do. Because Yah told our father Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, regarding the Gentiles who would bless and help the children of Israel, quote, and I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in you all shall all nations of the earth be blessed. In other words, Yah told Abraham, any nation or Gentile that gets an opportunity to support you, Israel, I will bless them. And so this is part of the mission of Yah to the Gentiles as well, that they become supporters of causes of needs for Israelites. And because they benefited from our spiritual blessings, they are then obligated to provide for us for our physical needs. In conclusion, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 46, Yahshua speaks of the time of his kingdom when he will judge the Gentile nations based on how they treat Israelites. The brethren of Yahshua, the children of Israel. It says in Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46, that Yahshua says this, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them from one another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick. You visited me. I was in prison. You came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Master, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, unto the least of these my Israelite brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them that are on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger. And you gave me no meat. I was thirsty. And you gave me no drink. You called me welfare queens. You called me beggars. I'm at Adam living, of course. But then our master continues to say in verse 3, I was a stranger. You took me not in. Naked. And you clothed me not. Sick and in prison. You visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Master, when saw we thee in hunger, or thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, and he's referring to the Israelites. You did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. 